welcome. So, we have uh, come to the last lecture of this course. So, uh, uh, we uh, uh, basically uh, what we have studied, we started with a basic uh, definition of uh, uh, what is elastic. So, we try to uh, discuss uh, uh, that what is the difference between plastic or the, mate uh, the material uh, uh, behavior which is permanently, uh, permanent deformations happens in the material or um, uh, uh, try to distinguish between the plasticity and elasticity. That means, uh, there we have discussed uh, one important thing that elasticity is not stress strain is linear essentially. The elasticity is that, that uh, it um, the path dependence is also important. So, that means, the loading and unloading curve uh, remains same, it cannot be different uh, in case of an elasticity, even though it comes to uh, the original uh, position. Uh, the loading and unloading, that means, in a other sense, the energy dissipation uh, is not uh, occurring. So, uh, the system energy remains uh, constant. So, that is uh, uh, one of the important aspect of elasticity. And when you uh, go um, uh, beyond that uh, state, then you really lose some energy or you add some energy into the system and the de deformation goes to a different state which is plastic, which we are not uh, uh, doing here. Now, uh, then we have introduced the concept of tensor. The tensor is actually we all know in terms of matrices. Now, uh, the uh, we know for instance stresses, we know strains, we know uh, um, uh, displacements. Displacement is a vector, stress and strain is a tensor. Why it is a second order tensor? Because it has two direction. So, uh, third order tensor will have third uh, three direction, fourth order tensor will have four the four direction. So, in this same, same concept we have introduced scalar as zero order uh, tensor. So, so, then we have just uh, dealt with some uh, tensor operations which is uh, inner product and then uh, uh, some calculus of uh, tensor calculus. For instance, the get out derivative or fresher derivative we have introduced that or specifically the directional derivative and then divergence, curl and all those things we have introduced. So, this gives you the fundamental or the basic uh, grammar of the uh, course. And then we introduce first concept of stress and then strain in uh, um, uh, theory of elasticity, the stress and strain. The once we uh, are equipped with uh, stress and strain, then uh, we um, go for the material behavior. Then the material behavior we essentially um, are defined from the uh, very uh, basic isotropic material to the general anisotropic material. And then to define that we need to define the strain energy, which is uh, an important uh, uh, aspects of the this. Uh, material behavior uh, for, by which we uh, actually try to define the different anisotropic behavior of the uh, different anisotropic material. For instance, the strain energy will be uh, rotationally invariant. So, these uh, things we have defined. Now, uh, in specifically in the material behavior 2, we discuss the material symmetry and we defined, we have uh, uh, learned what is uh, orthotropic material, what is transverse isotropic material, what is cubic material, all those things we have learned and how we can uh, generalize this. Uh, for instance, from the 81 uh, such material constant, how, how we can uh, come to a two uh, uh, material constant uh, for the isotropic material. So, um, this was the basic uh, discussion for the uh, material behavior too. Now, then we uh, start uh, giving you uh, the formulation for boundary value problems in elasticity. We discuss the governing equation. There we have also specifically discussed what is strain, uh, a stress based formulation and uh, displacement based formulation. In the stress based formulation, essentially we have derived the bihamoic equation, which is with the 
the help of compatibility equation. So, compatibility equation again we have given you a notion of what is physically what it means, what it uh, mathematically means. So, when you have a stress, uh, when you have a strain given and if you want to find out displacement, so that problem is an overdetermined problem. So, there is a constraint needed and that constraint is essentially compatibility equation. That is a uh, mathematical definition and what is the uh, physical definition of compatibility? Physical definition of a compatibility that means there is no, uh, uh, the deformation is uh, essentially if you remember this picture for instance the body which is uh, uh, for instance uh, this was here. So, the body cannot uh, deform arbitrarily like this. So, this cannot happen for instance. So, uh, uh, this gives us the uh, physical meaning of compatibility. So, all those things we have discussed and uh, we have also discussed in the stress based formulation that uh, uh, really in case of solving the biharmonic equation, uh, we do not need the constitutive equation uh, to solve the biharmonic equation. There we have applied the stress function approach. The stress function approach we have uh, seen uh, that satisfies the compatibility also. We construct the uh, uh, stress function uh, in a different way and then we try to use these uh, stress functions for a different class of problem. For instance, the bending problem, torsion problem and then the plane stress, plane strain problem in the subsequent model. And then we also discuss the uh, um, displacement based formulations where uh, essentially uh, we uh, write the differential equation in terms of displacement and we try to find out uh, the displacement u v or w in case of 3D. But in case of a stress based formulation we find out stresses which is sigma x x, sigma x y and sigma uh, y y. Then uh, finally, once you find out the stresses and then with the stress we need to substitute the constitutive equation which is relation between stress and strain and then that uh, essentially gives you uh, the strain and then uh, from that strain uh, we need to uh, we uh, go for the uh, displacement uh, calculations. So, that is the basic stress based approach. Now, in case of a displacement based approach, the procedure is totally reverse. You write the differential equation in terms of uh, displacement and from that displacement essentially you find out the uh, strains and then stresses. So, uh, that is the uh, more general approach displacement formulation is more general compared to stress based approach because uh, the construction of stress function is very tedious for a complicated problem. So, now uh, then we have uh, discussed the complex variable method. So, there are some problems which we can really solve uh, in a um, uh, exact way for a simple geometry and simple uh, uh, boundary condition. There we can use this type of method to solve the problem. Even the stress function approach is very much uh, restricted to the very simple geometry and simple boundary condition. Then uh, there are uh, two topics that we have discussed. Uh, Mm. Very briefly, one of them was thermoelasticity, and another one is photoelasticity. So, photoelasticity is an experimental technique which is still valid and very relevant today in terms of uh, its use. And uh, the thermoelasticity is that the primary uh, part of the thermoelasticity you have learned in your strength of material course, where essentially if you heat a bar, then uh, how its deformation uh, will uh, um, happen. So, if there is a uh, restraint in uh, restrainment in the bar. So, that we have discussed in the context of Duhamel New, uh, Newman uh, constitutive law. Then we have uh, uh, also discussed the one dimensional heat equation where uh, the and then uh, from the energy consideration or the uh, with the use of second law of thermodynamics we have found out that uh, uh, how to uh, 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 how this thermoelastic deformation happens. Then uh, if this thermoelastic, uh, the, if there certain conditions are there, then this thermoelastic deformations can be uncoupled. That means, the heat equation and the Navier's equation of elasticity can be solved separately. Heat equation gives us the temperature distribution within the body and then we use the temperature, uh, this temperature distribution of the body uh, to solve the, uh, uh, to find out the displacement or the deformation of the body with the help of Navier's equation of elasticity. Now, uh, this uh, heat equation and uh, mm, uh, 
uh, uh, Navier's equation can be coupled and that is we have explicitly given what term we need to we are neglecting and we why we are neglecting that. So, that was the basic uh, issues in the thermoelasticity and then also we have solved some problems which is uh, very much uh, uh, simply simple in nature because our approach in this course was analytical mainly. There was no numerical aspect of it and I have also uh, discussed this that most of the problems that we encountered in real life cannot be solved analytically because of the complication in the geometry, complication in the boundary condition and complication in the load also. So, this uh, most of the systems that we will encounter in the physical uh, world is need to be solved by approximate method and one of the such approximate method is finite element method or mesh free method or any finite difference method or any other method approximate method. So, even semi um, analytical method for instance Fourier series approach and all those things differential quadrature method those methods are also useful uh, um, to solve some uh, problems. Uh, but most general way of approaching these problems for a very uh, uh, complex uh, thing is the finite element and mesh free methods uh, are the most uh, popular. Now, uh, the um, photoelasticity thing we have uh, first we have discussed uh, one important aspect is the biofringence what is or the temporary uh, um, uh, change in the material. When you load a material some photoelastic material it shows anisotropic behavior in the refractive index which was earlier before loading uh, uh, was isotropic. That means, when you uh, and, and the uh, light passes through that material uh, the refractive index remains same in different uh, direction is same. That means, the refractive index is isotropic essentially. When you load that material then uh, the refractive index in different direction becomes different. So, this is temporary uh, change or uh, temporary doubly reflection uh, uh, property or uh, this uh, property is essentially the biofringence. So, this property actually helps us to find out the stress contour within the material given a loading. So, this actually uh, we calculate it and with the help of stress optics law we uh, calculate the stresses and essentially we calculate the difference in stresses. And from this difference, uh, difference in stresses if we assume purely elastic material then we can calculate the strains and then uh, we can calculate the uh, displacement from that. So, that is uh, uh, that is a very oldest approach of uh, experimentally um, observing the stress pattern within the body. Uh, so, this uh, approach actually uh, cannot be uh, generalized for all material because all materials are not photoelastic material. So, what we do generally for a complicated structure we make a model and then study its stress strain behavior. So, it is a scale version with a different material. Now, um, this can be alleviated with the help of biofringent coating. So, this uh, some aspects of it you coat uh, for instance the biofringent material by which we can get the surface strain or surface uh, stresses of the uh, body. So, that is a uh, uh, part of the uh, that is uh, even though that is not in a, uh, the full field uh, we cannot get we can get only the surface. Uh, behavior of the body. So, uh, we also discussed the some as, uh, very little aspects of digital image correlation there where you compare two uh, different image to get the stress uh, to get the displacement and finally, the strains. So, uh, that was the whole course. Then in the last lecture we have also discussed some aspects of the nonlinear elasticity or basically what is the difference between the linear and nonlinear elasticity. So, um, which can go nonlinear, which cannot go uh, linear. So, what we have seen is that the differential equation remains same and the basic difference is that deform and uh, undeformed geometry cannot uh, be remain same or the it is the difference is distinguishable. So, we really cannot uh, uh, neglect the undeformed geometry here or we cannot say that undeformed and deformed geometry uh, is almost same. So, that means, the displacement gradient is small. So, that assumption when we violate that we get the 
uh, geometric nonlinearity. And when uh, um, uh, uh, the stress strain relation, for instance, the stress uh, changes how uh, uh, strain changes, if this relation uh, is becomes nonlinear, then we get the material nonlinearity in the body. So, uh, so these are the basic difference of nonlinear elasticity and nonlinear elasticity itself is a uh, separate course. So, uh, we had no plan to discuss nonlinear elasticity here in this course. And naturally, with the difference in the configurations of reference and difference uh, 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 undeformed uh, or the deformed and undeformed configuration, we essentially uh, get different measures of strain which is not there in the nonlinear elasticity. For instance, Piola, uh, Kirchhoff stress and the Cauchy stress and the different other stress measures are also there, for instance, Bayard stress. So, um, uh, this uh, gives you different notion of the uh, um, uh, differential equation. We can write it in deformed configuration as well as undeformed configuration. So, most of the uh, quantities that we defined in the nonlinear elasticity in the undeformed configuration does not have meaning, but mathematically we can define it and there are some ad advantage on it. For instance, the formulations can be based on the updated Lagrangian, Lagrangian or Eulerian formulations uh, where we uh, uh, for instance, we in the difference geometry, if we always refer uh, uh, or we find out the solution based on our reference geometry, we go for Lagrangian formulation. And then uh, if we go for the uh, uh, updated uh, Lagrangian formulation, once you get the one road step and then you update your geometry and that becomes your reference geometry, then we go for the updated Lagrangian formulation. All in formulation is also uh, very important for fluid mechanics where the fluid uh, the constant form, uh, volume formulation there uh, we fix the uh, this uh, um, domain and particle moves on. So, uh, uh, that is already in formulation. There is another formulation known as co-rotational formulation, uh, so which is body attached coordinate system. So, these things uh, actually uh, uh, are very uh, 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 different from what we have learned in the linear elasticity. So, the next step for this uh, after this course is uh, a course on uh, nonlinear elasticity and continuum mechanics which can be clubbed together. So, uh, the um, and uh, not only that the solution procedure which is for the nonlinear elasticity is entirely different compared to the linear elasticity because in a linear elasticity your governing equation becomes linear. So, what you uh, after discretization you get a linear system of equation which can be uh, solved in one shot. So, which is just uh, the matrix vector solution through the Gaussian elimination or any other uh, uh, sol uh, solution uh, methodology. But in case of a nonlinear elasticity, your differential equation becomes nonlinear, and so your discretized finalized uh, final discretized uh, version of the governing equation becomes uh, nonlinear equation. So, there the solution strategy is necessary. Uh, for instance, the uh, Newton Raphson method by which the successive linearization we can do and we can uh, finally uh, um, uh, solve the uh, system for an incremental uh, way. So, that is one of the uh, major issue in the nonlinear uh, elasticity. So, uh, nonlinear elasticity um, uh, has two aspects, one is the theoretical aspects, another is the solution aspect because uh, the solution is naturally not same as the in case of linear elasticity. So, um, and after this we can go for uh, plasticity, solution of plasticity, uh, uh, plastic material, what will happen if the material does not become uh, elastic. So, uh, then we can go for the higher end mechanics or advanced mechanics for instance, the geometric mechanics which is uh, more um, mathematical in nature. So, uh, the next course uh, I would suggest uh, uh, is the uh, continuum mechanics or the nonlinear elasticity where we basically uh, uh, depart from the linear regime to a nonlinear regime. So, with this uh, uh, I thank you all uh, and uh, we stop here uh, for theory of elasticity. Thank you.